Hello, my name is Dan Garcia, and I would like to show you a short movie from something cool that our team did on Seth Day's Warsaw 2017. With very low effort, we managed to build a 3D interactive interface of our server rooms using Blender software. Fun fact, the floor is literally the same as we have in our server room, as well as the vents. We took pictures and made textures out of them. This virtual server room has four walls. Two of them are interactive. This one presents us Ceph's monitor log output. The one on the right provides Rados bench log. Now let's have a look into the Eterna CD 10,000 rack. In short, this one is built with four nodes, one management node and three switches used for public cluster and management node network. The disks are connected with OSDs, so we can run some actions on them. Let's stop OSD 12. When an OSD has a state other than up, the correlated disk will be ejected. Let's start it again. As you probably already noticed, those little orange bars reflect the CPU usage on each of the 32 logical cores. Let's have a look into the node tuning menu. TuneD is a tool present in Linux Red Hat. It's used to adjust various OS settings. CPM is our internal tool that can mess with CPU affinity for Ceph processes and threads. We can assign all OSDs to one CPU to simulate a massive bottleneck. The cool feature is that we can also change the CPU affinity of threads inside Ceph processes. Thanks to this, we can look more globally on a specific thread behavior. Let's start the Rados Write benchmark. Currently, nodes are tuned with the throughput performance profile. Now we've changed the profile to latency performance. As you can see, the bandwidth is significantly improved. Now we go back to the throughput performance profile. OK, now let's have a look on the back of our virtual rack. On the top, we have the public network switch with blue cables. In the middle, there is a cluster switch with yellow ones. On the bottom, it's our management network switch with the red cables. Each network cable has its own properties. So we can simulate various network bottlenecks such as packet loss or increased latency. The cluster network behavior could also be altered. We can now set data loss or modify latency on all nodes at the same time. This is simulated by the public switch menu. The cluster switch menu has the same functionality. Pulling the plug in this virtual environment is also possible. OK, I see that the right benchmark without cleanup is almost done. In a moment, we can start the read bench test.
Let's add a one millisecond delay. This causes about a 15 megabytes performance drop. When we add the same value on the other node, it is dropping to almost 60 megabytes per second. Let's clear all the delays. Now we'll add a 10% packet loss on the public network. The drop is huge. We'll clear this up and check how messing with the cluster network can change our read performance. Adding a huge delay didn't change the read bandwidth. Let's clear the delay and add a 50% packet drop. It looks like dropping the packets on the cluster network is worse than an increased latency. After removing the packet drop, performance slowly goes back to a normal level. Now we'll use the tuning menu to play with the CPU affinity. What will happen if we assign all OSDs to one logical CPU core? All OSDs are sharing one CPU, so each of them has a smaller portion of CPU time. This directly influences the bandwidth. Let's redistribute the OSDs to all CPUs. The bandwidth should go back to normal. Now we're going to assign the OSD threads to a logical CPU based on their names. An OSD has 28 unique thread names. In the operating system, threads are bound by similar rules as processes. So we can also set CPU affinity on them to tell the kernel schedule to pin the given process to the dedicated logical CPU. This is a non-standard way of doing performance checks but you will see that looking from this angle, we get quite interesting conclusions. First, we'll spawn a read test. You can see that two CPUs on every server are saturated almost all the time. Counting from zero, we have MS Acceptor closer to the left and TP OSD TP closer to the right. The conclusion is that most of the load during the read are generated by two threads. Now let's check what the right benchmark would look like. Would it be different? We have a slightly different pattern here. Two threads are significantly higher using CPU during writes. Those would be TPF store OP and just like with the reads, TP OSD TP. In a moment, you should see it better. Let's change back scheduling to normal, so all OSDs are on all CPUs.
write performance is starting to grow because the mentioned threads are no longer bound to only one CPU. Finally, we'll clean up all Rados benchmark objects. This operation will also generate higher load on our cluster. It's wondering why the first 16 CPU cores are doing more work. Maybe something related to NUMA? Okay, it's time to close our virtual rack and conclude this video. I hope you all enjoyed our presentation. Thank you very much for your attention.